What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Masters Edition, the Teen It Out Podcast. I'm your host, AC, with DFS Karma and BetKarma.com. And we got Sam Sherman tonight. As always, we're back at it. It's Monday. So excited. We got the Masters. I mean, I don't know, Sam. Like, this is it. This is our Super Bowl. This is March Madness Final Four. This is the World <laughs> Series. It, this is the Masters, right? I mean, how else do you regurgitate this week? Christmas. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, Wednesday is like for sure my Christmas Eve. It's weird. I'm like trying to get some more energy for this pod because I'm not, I'm like obviously super excited. It's been up early this morning, but yeah, dude, the Masters, I don't know. It's funny. I saw someone, one of my favorite kind of English guys I follow on Twitter, and I agree. It's like, besides maybe Tiger like missing this, unfortunately, I think this is set up to be so good. I mean, Speed's just one, which I was actually really glad to see. He and, I agree with whoever said it on CBS. It just golf is a lot more fun. Not that it's not fun in general, but a lot more fun when Spieth is kind of good. He's just such an exciting player, and especially at Augusta. So I'm pretty hyped. Um, I think uh, there'll be a lot of talk about it, but I think some of the casual viewers will be a little surprised. I think it'll play not drastically different, but definitely different than it did in November. I don't think we'll see kind of the destruction of the course like DJ did. So. I'm excited. I mean, this is, yeah, this is the best event to watch all year, every single year. Best event ever. We had a good week last week. We'll briefly touch on it. Of course, it's the Masters, so we're going to stick with that tonight. Um, you had a good week. I mean, yeah. I scores go off. I mean, you had a really profitable week. How about betting? Anything in the betting streets? No, I, it's funny. I was like, I don't know. It's the same reason, it's the same kind of thing I feel this week. Like, I, I, I wanted Spieth to win, but his number was just so low after DJ withdrew. I was like, I just can't. Because, like, to lay, I think, to be, like, a reasonable amount, to lay that amount of money was just crazy. So I had, I mean, I didn't have any, like, super, you know, guys really on top. I thought about betting um, Charlie Hoffman live after the first round. I'm actually glad I didn't because he was kind of there, but that would have been kind of a waste. But. I don't know. Did you? I don't know. If, I didn't even see if you had it. No, anymore. I did not hit. I did. I'm pissed because I got my bets in late on Tuesday and speed line already Me moved. So I lost yeah. out on that. And, you know, I went light this past week because I knew the Masters. I already have three or four bets from this whole year. Got some good odds and some guys and uh, probably make a couple more here. I'll drop that in betkarma.com. So um, I hit a big qualifier ticket last week. A uh, little promo I'm going to run for the subscribers, which you can, if you're not. Head over to the website, dfskarma.com, right now. Check out what we got to offer, not just for golf. I mean, honestly, everything. There's something called MVP subscribers. You can get uh, package offerings to all sports with one. Um, and obviously, our golf package weekly and monthly. Um, I won a $4,000 qualifier ticket to the Millie Maker. There's multiple Millie Makers this week, which is so fun. Really? Um, yeah. Cool. I'm probably going to enter manually, um, You know, even though I want a qualifier ticket. So I'll probably have two lineups going which is rare for me because i don't like to overspend in those high dollars once in a while i'll take a shot but i have a free entry so i might as well hedge and get some hedge life going so um i think i'm probably going to be sharing some of the winnings um with carbonation if you are a subscriber so now is a great week head over there there's a discount as well so if i finish in the top three i will be sharing some of the winnings so the details will be coming in discord this week hop on over there content picks plays core plays, everything else, as always, at dfskarma.com and the bets and the content there at betkarma.com. All right, Sam, let's get into it. Just give a quick overview. I mean, like you joked about pre-pod, if you don't know the Masters, man, it's probably pretty hard to talk about this course. I mean, but give your quick elevator speech about the Masters course itself. Yeah, I mean, it, it plays long. The greens are bent grass. They're really fast. I think you'll see this a lot, I will say, for this week watch uh I, I barely watched like a i watched a very small amount but people who did watch it they had that women's am there this past week those greens are running like unbelievably fast and i don't know with the arrogance at augusta national i feel like they maybe saw dj tear it apart last year and they're like okay this is not happening again but it should be you know you have to distance is pretty key it sounds obvious you have to score on the par fives and you have to be able to save par i mean we saw when Patrick Reed won, he just literally got up and down from every single place. That's what Spieth does when he's on top of this game, and that's what you have to do. I mean, you can go low, 
but there's also a lot of trouble. I mean, the wind is very deceptive on a hole, especially number 12. And yeah, I just think the guys who are walking on the long approaches, good around the green. And then, so I was kind of looking at you this year. I think I'm going to kind of give a look because course history is so reigns so supreme here. Like for comparison, you know, I mean, on like a given week in my, you know, overall, you know, DK ranks that you'll see on the projections portal and my article, I'll maybe wait course history 10%. I normally go like 30% for uh, course history here because there's no greens books. You have to know how to play it, but look at their history. Look at how they performed at um, Riviera and WC Mexico at, um, in that one in Mexico, which I think are kind of had some decent correlation, but that's kind of what looking at this week. And then similar to um, some of the courses I'm through, they're harder. I mean, you just, it's really hard to come into Augusta in bad form and find your game. It's just not mm-hmm. the place for it. So I would definitely rate, you know, form, course form uh, a lot higher than usual this week. And that's kind of my main takeaways without talking about the course. Everybody knows let's, let's get into the DraftKings pricing itself because this is what the people really love to hear. The picks and the plays, right? Um, Sam and I like to start at talking about 10,000 and above. And of course we'll bake in game theory. We'll talk about some of the, you know, very chalk, especially this week, a couple in specific, very, very probably high owned plays, which I kind of like in a way, especially that's why I really want to play two lineups. Like I don't want to play a couple of these guys in another lineup and just see what happens. Right. So um, 10,000 and above, you know, my quick game theory this week is like most weeks, again, the optimal play, just looking at it right now, Probably says fade everybody. If you're making a cash lineup this week, you know, it's a really good week to make a cash game. Some weeks we come on these pods and we kind of rant and rave and say it's not a good week, blah, 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 for whatever reason. I think this is a great week because there's newbie money that comes into the market for the Masters. There's more um, cash game offerings this week. Um, So it's just a great week. And again, I probably would fade everybody up top and build below in my optimal build. that being said, Sam, I mean, is that kind of how you're looking as the optimal strategy? And then what is your one to two um, leverage plays in your like second or third builds if you're looking to start up top? Yeah, it's like we've said with, a load, with any loaded field, it's like there is an absolutely case to play probably the top 20 price guys. You just kind of like are finding flaws with them. Um, I'd say, you know, I just talked about how important course history is. And if you kind of wait it all, like Rory probably has the best course history of anyone, but he just does not, has not looked right for several months now. He keeps trying to change that swing. So I'd say up top, my favorites are, although we're about the putter, I do like Justin Thomas. And then now that Rom had that baby, I mean, oh my God, that just seems like a lot. Yeah. I, I think this could be common. I'd be interested to see as the week goes on and what you'll see in the portal. But I mean, I, I don't know. I Dustin Johnson has just not looked like the dominate the dominating guy he was even a couple months ago. But we all know how that goes. He's like <laughs> playing bad for him, and obviously for him to come out and dust the field would not shock anybody. But I'd say my favorite two above ten are Rom and JT, and then I I do like Bryson, but I don't know if he would be really popular, which I expect him to be. I don't. I would be fine pivoting off of him. Yeah, and obviously. I'm Xander. No, I'm not, no, no, no I, I, I'm with you. I'm not dying on Xander. I love Rory long term, but I agree there's just something a little adrift right now. And I'm assuming this is how others are thinking. Same thing with you. I'll probably avoid Dustin. He'll probably win. No, but in all seriousness, I, I, I just think that's an easy fade this week and a multitude of reasons. He won just in November as well. Um, but yeah, my favorites are Ram and JT, man. And in that second lineup, I'm kind of thinking about. Um, you know, I'm talking about, and I, I almost like want to start with both of them. Cause I think that'd be really contrarian this week is getting to the top. And, and it's different with the masters. I mean, number one, we talk about kind of pre-pod. I mean, the field is so small and you can always X out, you know, guys like Sandy Lyle, who's a thousand and Larry Mize and all these guys, you know, the, the make the cut percentage is pretty high. We saw in November, like, I feel like none of the chalk missed in November and the six to six, like, I think I had a couple six to sixes that didn't even cash. And then I had right. So I like that because yeah. And my my point of that is that like this a lot of the six K guys like they're not scrubs. Like it's not like you're punting. So I like the idea of starting those two top guys. And I think I mean 
we're kind of jumping down in a second. I mean, I don't know. I have speed right now, at like 22% projected ownership. That's probably way too low. He might be. He'll be 35%. Yeah, I think he might be. Yeah, he could easily push that. And I think basically if you were to start, I think the chalky way to start is I think a lot of people start Rom Spieth or JT Spieth, um, which I will not be doing. I nope. like them individually. I like Spieth, but I put this in our Discord, and I guess we're just kind of already there. I mean, Spieth, I like him a lot. He's probably playing the best golf of anyone the last three months. But purely from a game theory perspective, he is like an auto fade in lineups and I think in the biggest tournaments. And if he wins, yeah, you're not going to win. But like golf is very volatile. So if he doesn't come in the top 10, which is obviously possible, you immediately have leverage in the field and you haven't done anything except just avoid one guy. But I will play him in cash almost certainly. I don't see a reason to avoid him there. Yeah. I mean, he's, we've got, it's so funny how golf is like, it's the most amazing sport in the world. We've written him off for literally years, plural. And now he's like the co-favorite. Now he's like the co-favorite to win a major. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is yeah. absolutely, it's stunning. But he, de- I mean, he deserves it. Like, it's incredible. The last, I mean, really since January, his stats are just basically, you know, speed in his prime, obviously. So, mm-hmm. yeah, he's a block. Like you said, though, unbelievable easy fade in GPPs. That's why I want to make a second lineup so bad. Like, I don't want to have Spieth in it, and I don't want to have Corey Connors in it. Um, but, yeah. yeah I mean, this- say, if, you're, if you're starting your cash games, I'd probably go to the chart. I mean, I assume over 50% of people in double ups will have – it'll be Spieth, Casey, Connors, yep. all unpriced. Mm-hmm. And, like, I mean, I don't know. It just – because you're in your lineup, obviously, like every match will look so good because the pricing is so soft. But – I think it presents a good thing. You know, I don't know how I feel about him. You play him more often. I, I love the kid to watch. I mean, Morikawa, I think, is going to be by far the lowest owned of anyone 9,000 and above. Why? Um, because every time Morikawa wins, everyone remembers how good he is, and then he has one tournament that he doesn't do well, and people kind of assume he's, like, off. I, I don't know. what. It's, yeah, I, I don't love know. hearing this. Like, of all these pods we've done this year – that to me is just wrong by the public. Like I can't, I mean, I'm looking at protection portal when I opened it, I was like, damn work. I was kind of going under the radar and listen, if you're in this tier, like I said, you're starting in this tier. Obviously we already talked about speed. Um, Cantley's probably like good chalk for a reason. He's 9,800. I feel like it's fair priced. Um, he's ranked second in oh, my yes. mind. Morikawa yeah. though, ranked seventh in my model. Uh, in the last 12 to 15 rounds, he's first with his approach shots. He's first in ball striking, first in tee to green, six in green and regs. I mean, yeah, the putter can get very cold, but he can also get very hot with the putter too. It's kind of heckle and jive. It, it, he's volatile. Let's just say that. Um, and I like that this week. I feel like he's a guy that I almost want to start that second lineup with. I mean, then again, you know, I mentioned Rom and JT. I mean, do you really want to – do you think Rom's going to show up this week? I need to know, like gun to head. Is Rom going to show up? He's the favorite uh, in, in your win odds um, in the projections portal. I he's love one him. Of my, he's yeah. number one in my model. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. I, it's, you know, it's all how you, like, approach it qualitatively because, like, okay, yeah, good. He doesn't have the possibility of leaving because he's having a baby. But, like, I don't know. I don't have any kids. But, like, I don't know how much he's practicing over these next couple of days. Like, I don't know when he should. Yeah, like, I mean, so again, that is such a narrative. Who the hell knows? Like, I don't, people have kids, but like, mm-hmm. I hope it lowers ownership because that will make me play him less. Um, I mean, I don't know if you want, like, if you want the risk factor of if he's out of form and then injury, I mean, just go Rom Brooks. I'm going to play Brooks for sure. Yeah, I feel like Brooks is a, another like really great play, even in cash games. That's why never I never play him. Make yeah. your optimal builds below 10,000. I really firmly believe that's the route this week, as, mm-hmm. as do you. Brooks is yeah. definitely in place for that. But, again, Brooks, this is why this is, I think, going to be a really fun week. Brooks is such an easy fade in GPPs if you're making just two or three lineups. Like, I, I just feel like that's an easy fade. Like, you really do, I oh. think, this week. 9,200, that is very fair price for cash games. Oh, yeah. He'll be low comparative for, like, Brooks in a major – but he'll also be like, as he always is, just over owned in majors because he just, I mean, obviously his record speaks for itself. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Brooks will be, I don't know, I'm shocked at what I've kind of read on the industry of Finau not being a mega shot. But then again, Finau, just like Xander, always comes in like 5% over what 
I think he is. <laughs> well, you um, know, I'm a female lover. Yeah, I know you're going to play him. Yeah, I'm sure. Honestly, I'm going to play him. This is the right. one he's going to win. This what? is the one he's going to win. You're right. Damn, that's actually. I'm sure you bet him. I'm sure you bet him. I do yeah. have a bet. Hell yeah. Um, I think I'm going to play him in my main lineup because, like you're saying, the projections portal says 11% right now for the Masters. That's really low because there's only what? How many people are in this field? It's a lot lower, right? Like one. I think officially it's like 87. Oh, and if you yeah. take out like the people who have no chance, it's like a 65 person field. It's 70 person field, maybe. So if Fino's projected to be 11% owned this week with this shorter field, that's like saying he's three or 5% owned. You realize that, right? Yeah. I just, you know. I love that. I'm playing him on my main lineup. Fuck it. I'm sticking with it. Make sure I don't come off that, by the way. I put a little joking emoji on Saturday. I was like, Fino left early for Augusta. Like, I was thinking about that. Like, I feel like that's a thing. Like, he's been bad the last two weeks. People, That's why people aren't going to play him. He's been bad. But who cares, dude? It's golf. Like, he's played so good all year. Like, what an amazing breakthrough win this would my, be. Won. My favorite's a 9K, probably just adjusting for everything, or probably read. Who people play because he's one, and I love Webb. I think Webb is underpriced. I'm not playing either of those guys. I don't know why, but I'm not on Reed and I'm not on Webb at all this week. I don't, I don't want anything to do with Webb, but I'm not gonna stay. Yeah, I mean, like fast bent greens around, getting up and down, scoring on par fives. I mean, I know, yeah. I know. I just I don't I, want to do that. What I'm curious is, I had my only like future I had for the Masters was Hatton from a while ago. And boy, that looked really good like two months ago. And now he is playing so bad. And of course, he's going to come in like top five or he's going to miss cut. I agree. I mean, I I don't know if I want to play him. I'm definitely not playing Lee Westwood at 8,800. That's no, there's no chance. I don't think anyone else is either, but no, I'm just not. I really don't like seeing Lee Westwood's projected ownership at 666. The I just, I know it's for Lee Westwood this week. In our projection. Um, I was originally going to fade as we kind of moved down. So I obviously, I think Berger could be my pick to win. I haven't decided yet because I kind of like JT a lot, but Berger, I don't think is talked about in the same top tiers of guys. And I think he is, but no one seems to be really interested in some JM. And he came like T2 last year as a first timer. That was pretty impressive. I thought, I mean, he's some J, he is a baller, dude. He is. I mean, he's, He's been, like, not – I think for, like, you know, a year ago, it was, like, okay, he just is going to be solid with his irons every single event. And now that he's solid, like, 75% of the time, people think he's, like, playing poorly, which he has been a little more volatile than usual. But I don't know. I mean, I I like him a lot. I guarantee you're going to play Scotty Scheffler, but I absolutely am. <laughs> you know I love Scotty. I mean, yeah, I think about it. In the- so. Dude, Man, you know, I- he looked just – so cr- last week I was like, oh my god, he's burning me. And then day two, I was like, great fade. He's like a hundred over, yeah. makes the cut, then Saturday goes like eight under. And I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. I just don't think a short like game that. is good enough. I don't think a short game is good enough to contend. I know, I know. How about our boy Hideki? He started showing signs of life last week. He's yeah. gonna be good this week, dude. I, I think he just I think he, despite being a bad putter, just plays his course well. I think. Hideki is a great pivot, which sounds weird, off of like Cam Smith and Fitzpatrick. I think Cam Smith has a crazy good history, and I do like him, but I think it'll cause him to be a little overowned. Um, Fitzpatrick, uh, no, I'm not. He doesn't hit the ball far enough. No. You have to really hit the ball far yet. I mean, are you playing Fleetwood? He stinks. No, I stopped playing Fleetwood like two years ago. I mean, maybe he'll come around, but I'm not playing him. He- um. This comes, I think, kind of goes down. I'm not sure. I, you can kind of give your favorites, or I can, I mean, I think these are, like, the places where this could be, like, the chalk could bust if there wasn't any, and that's Sergio and Casey, who I I like both of them. I bet Sergio. I like Casey more than Sergio, historically, so I'd probably stick yeah. with Casey. Sergio. It's fun, because K- Casey is definitely underpriced. I don't get why he's 77. That makes no sense to me, but... Dude, he is so tilting. I mean, he'll he could do so well. And I'm like, what was it? Was it two years ago when he shot when he made like a 13 and then burned everyone's cash line? I mean, that's he's just such a coward. I mean, it's just I don't know. Where's Kate? Um, Sergio's, oh, okay. I'm looking him up right now. Yeah, I mean, I guess I kind of overlooked him before we get on this. He's pod. been playing. 
he's been playing like exactly kind of a game that you need. Yeah. And obviously he's playing when he won. Um, Talk about he, tilting though. I mean, Sergio can easily tilt your ass on. Oh uh, my God. He can, he, he could easily hit all 18 greens and shoot like 75. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, I just, I'm trying to think, cause like I, you know, those guys are super chalk and it's easy to get away from it. But like, I don't really like Bubba. I don't like Fleetwood. I do like Adam Scott, but man, he's look weird. Definitely so, play Jason Day because everyone hates him. Yeah, we, me and you both have been getting more on the day train the last few months, and I feel like it's, you know, it hasn't paid off in spades, but it's, uh, it's treated us somewhat okay. And yeah, mm-hmm. days, I like Day a lot, dude. I have a bet on Day like seventy-five or eighty-five to one. He's, he probably still is, honestly, the same odds. But I just feel like those odds are so wrong. Like Jason Day in a major especially the masters around the green. You need the game there. I feel like he just can win like straight up. Like that's like, it's a guy that I will consider highly in the second lineup. I'm thinking about doing, I wanted to make two comments as we're scrolling down, moving a little fast here. We didn't talk about Hoblin. I think you and I both love Hoblin like everybody else. I mean, yeah, I like him the most. If I was going to choose between like Hoblin, Morikawa and like Wolf, I would choose Hoblin. Yeah, I just wish the the short game was a little bit better. He ranks really high in my model, though. Um, he's yeah, second. At the same time, I agree. His putting can be so bad, but he has really gotten a lot better around the green. Yeah. In my opinion, I mean, I do. Like, go ahead. Let me. I got a guy. I think this is like I, we put a lot of emphasis on guys that we're def, definitely strongly playing. I feel like it's some of these are obvious plays this week, unless you're not really paying attention to golf. Um, but the first guy that I like is a really strong pivot. You mentioned that you liked him as well. And I'm going to consider playing him in my main lineup. I don't know if he'll be in the main lineup or not, but I'm probably leaning that way. And that's Adam Scott. It's mm-hmm. 7,600 and it's twofold. Number one, I want some leverage. We talk about this every damn week on this podcast. Like, give me some leverage. He's projecting so low right now. I mean, my God, why? I mean, you need to play the draw here. Adam Scott, potentially best draw drawer in the world, you know, like just like an automatic, like driver, long irons. I mean, check. He's historically been pretty good with the putter since he's changed the last few years. I mean, round the green game is yeah. okay. I, I love it. Suspect, but yeah, I mean, former winner here, not to mention I was talking about the top about the Riviera comp, which he won last year. Like he just, there's guys like that are bad putters like Hideki that just play well because yeah. they know it because they play. And that's why I shy away from like, I would prefer a guy who's not hitting his absolute best stuff compared to a guy with less experience. I mean, I, okay, here's a good one near Scott. Like I think it's going to be more chalk. Like, are you going to play? I have no interest in Neiman. I'm not playing it. No, I'm not because he's just, I love him, but no, I know. I'm with no, I you. Too. I, yeah. I'm just not doing it. I'm not playing Zal. Give me Scott all day. I mean, dude, one of the best stats that you and I both look at, and courtesy of Fantasy National, which is derived through our projections portal a little bit, Mm -hmm. is the opportunities gained. And in the last 15 rounds, he ranks number one in the entire field. He actually has not been making some putts. I know we just, you know, said inversely he's been better with the putter, but he, I just give me the guy who's number one in opportunities gained all damn day at lower ownership, and he's a brand name, Adam Scott former winner i mean dude all day let's yeah. go i do like willie z man i mean i know it's really hard is this, this obviously is his first masters correct like yeah I no i like him a lot i just i'm just saying if he's gonna be like popular and it's his first time well, for me I don't, like, think he'll be. I don't think he will be what are you projecting he, him he at? Not be. like 10 percent it's 7300 i don't know that is pretty high though for that price range um if i can get any sort of like information from like someone's Twitter or something. If Justin Rose is like playing, yeah. I'm definitely yeah, playing. Dude, 7200. I, I mean, looking at him while you were talking about him. Yeah, like I, staring at him. I like barely forgot. I kind of forgot he was even in the field because like obviously he's been out. And I don't know, dude. I mean, he's got really, the field. Oh yeah. Oh my god. He's like he's gonna be. He could be chalking like 60. What is he? Yeah, he's 68. He just is so good here historically. Um, well, so what's up with my Rose? favorite? I mean, what's up with Rose? Like, what is up with him? Like, why is he? Remember, he made like 
he, what term was it? He was playing with speed, and he made like a ten in a hole, and like withdrew after nine, and has like not played since. So I don't know. Been like speed like the last like year. He was number one in the world literally like a year ago. Yeah, his age has been showing. I think I don't. I don't know what the injury is. I, my favorite play in the slower range, he could get popped. Is Max Homa? He's playing so well. You're projecting him pretty high right now, which I don't yeah, like. I mean, look at him. Too. I don't know. Here's the thing. like in this range, I think basically not playing like Corey Connors is you'll just get like you're gonna have a guy who's lower. I mean, yeah. again, I'm playing Corey Connors. I like him, but he is going to be like, and he should be at this price. Mega, mega. he could be like in the top three highest dogs. It's this is be crazy. part of the podcast because yeah, it's you know, a major championship. And sometimes when I'm making a NASCAR lineup, like I do that, I joke around with all of us, like staff customers, but I like love NASCAR. I don't know why. Like it, I feel like it reminds me of golf more and more. And like sometimes the it's like, guys, the there's this guy's, like, what you love it too. What? Oh yeah. Because like, it's like, there's nothing that's like thing you could go from winning and or losing 10 grand in a matter of two seconds it's it's exhilarating but i feel like in nascar there is too much of the like the cole custer guys that are like 5400 and they're like owned by like 80 percent of the field i feel like that's Corey Connors this week like absolutely 900 like okay like you said yeah i'll play him in cash like and i do love Corey connors we've made so much money with him in betting and props and obviously dfs like but I want nothing to do with him in GPPs. Like you stand to gain absolutely nothing. And by sheer luck of taking any of these guys around him, you can have so much leverage. So let's talk about this. This is probably the most important part of the pod, minus the speed zone and the Brooks zone up ahead. I mean, what are you looking for for leverage around Connors? Obviously, we like Connors, y'all that are listening. We're playing him in cash games, okay? Um Kokrak is gonna be I mean, popular. Who is? Co-crack. Oh, I know. I would think about having this. I mean, I think the leverage around him, I think it's interesting that people saw like Ian Poulter look pretty good at match play and he has a really good track record and he's a hundred dollars less and like no one's playing him. Um, I think Ryan Palmer was very chalky this last week and he's playing like the best golf of his career. I like him as a pivot. Um, dare I say Brian Harmon? Oh God. It lefty course though. Oh, I know, dude. dude. I know. I feel That's like that. I've been dogging on him all year, but I gotta That's click him because this guy has been every week. I make fun of Sam, and this guy is like top fifteen. I swear to God, every week, dude. We oh, might have a hard look at him. Honest to God, what's he projected ownership wise here? Six. Yeah, like six percent, five percent. I mean, um, orically lefty course, right? What, I mean, what is I think, his history? I think the interesting thing, if you want to go like really well, it's funny, like. I don't know. Like I always will just throw Kevin Na on like a 20 max because he'll his likelihood of like top tening and like withdrawing are the same. But if you capture the top ten, I mean no one owns him. Brian Harmon has only missed one cut since last July. I mean that's yeah, a- dude, it's like the most boring system. But the only problem is like as I talk about me, he just has no distance. Like he just has no. So it's tough to like. For instance, like, I, I don't know, it's tough to see him ever winning, and I would also be furious if he did. But, like, at 6,800, at a third of the ownership of Connors, I mean, their range of outcomes can't be that different. It's definitely not. Connors is not – the way I think the best way to think about it is Connors, in my opinion, is not three times more likely to finish in the top 20 as Harmon. He's just not. So who else are we looking at down here? I mean, dare I say – Dude, Matt Jones, 6,300, he just won. Clearly, he's in good form. He is way down there. What is his record here? He's got the length. I think think if you want the ultimate punt, I did some confused. Not that he's like a a stud. Oh, my God. Matt Wallace is down here. He just almost And why is Stuart Sink 6,100? Like, I'm saying, like, not that he's, like, going to win this tournament, but, like, He's the same. I think he's in a little better form than Mike Weir. See, that's why I keep thinking about this like second lineup I want to build. And it's like, man, do I get super aggressive and take two of the top five guys? Because I know that's going to be a contrarian move this week. I mean, Matt Wallace is down here. The dude's like almost won, like, I feel like twice in the last couple rounds. Um, and we've been talking about him too. Like, some of the weeks where Matt Wallace, let me click on him. 
some of the weeks we kind of were like starting to, to bring him up. Like at the Arnold, he came in 18th. He did miss the cut at the Honda. I mean, tough tournament though, you know, and then third place at the, the problem uh, with Wallace is he just like, doesn't, he doesn't like do anything like exceptionally well. Like he just does everything kind of like fine. So it's hard to see him. Like I don't know. at that price, I get it. I mean, Lanto, I was all on him last week, had a terrible first round, which kind of burned me, but I don't mind him again. I don't like him, but I do not know why Zach Johnson is 6,300. That is random. He's been playing pretty well, too. I mean, is yeah, he really he's playing like playing. very well? Yeah. I mean, I think you kind of always know there's going to be some guy. I mean, I think there's Dude. someone, take someone like Arn Beesberger. Like, he is a top, like, I think he might be in the top 50 or like top 70 player in the world. I mean, I'm not saying he's, again, going to win. Like, you know, Bobby Mack, dude, the lefty, just took down DJ in the pods. I don't know. I mean, Bobby Mack's kind of a wagon. Yeah. What about – you didn't talk about Kucher. I mean, I the only reason I'm going to – I mean, I know he's not. Really good. His course history is unbelievable here. But I didn't watch much golf of the match play. But, dude, I heard an interview with him at the end, and you know us. Like, we, me and you, we are. We're kind of both interview guys. Like, some people aren't. I heard him say in specific he's never felt better in the last year and a half than he had. He said something clicked in the last two weeks, and I was like, okay, mental note, Masters, Cooch, probably going to be low-owned. And then he was starting to dominate. What, what place did he come in last week? Um, I saw him up there in the he leaderboard. Kind of, he kind of tailed off. He was up there for a while. I don't know what he finished at. So he finished at 12th. I mean, dude, he was, like, right there for a little bit. So, it's like, dude, two tournaments in a row. Now he's going into the Masters. Again, this is just amazing leverage. There's, you know, he, he could easily outscore Corey Connors. Corey Connors, obviously, we are known for the, the birdies. But Matt Kuchar, man, he said something clicked. Came in third place in the matchup play. Had a great week last week. I, I kind of like him a lot. Um, I got to say, him, too, dude. Circling back for a second to, I don't know, I just kind of was mentioning almost as a joke, We Spur has made every cut here. He's played here five times in their recent cut. Yeah. I mean, Boy, I feel like about made... all, uh, Jimmy Walker has played here seven times in a row and never missed the cut. See, Wu's down here, 6,700. I mean, yeah, that's I think he'll get ownership. I don't know. I don't like to play. I, I don't know. He's, I may play him in like a 20 max, but he's, I'm a little intrigued by this Jimmy Walker thing. I don't know what, how he just always makes. The Your boy, Sebastian Munoz, I can see him in like using the optimizer, you know, 6,600. Again, this is an amazing week running the optimizer yet again and make sure you, you, you kind of like pick at least six to eight guys like in the 6K range and just go like three X of what they're projected. So if they're projected, this is a simply, this is literally what I do. And I hit last week again with the optimizer. Um, you know, you kind of land on six to eight guys ish. That's I don't know, like depends on the field. And if they're projected for say three percent, just make them eight percent, nine percent, seven percent, like whatever you feel comfortable with. And you just gotta hope that a few of those guys have a really good week, and then the rest of your um your lineups actually you know can really get up there because you're naturally gonna have other good guys in the lineup. But you obviously gotta hit below. And I think one thing with the op, I'm not sure how you would use. I think it would matter if you're doing like 150 versus 20, but like. You know, I always like to have some sort of like at least two, if I can, or three X the field. I mean, if Corey yeah. Connor is going to be 20% owned, I'm not playing 60% Corey Connor. That's no, so no way. I'll play, also, him, I'll play him even the field though in optimizers this week. Me too, because, but I'm not going to try to get three X. And, and that's, I mean, and it's the same thing where for me, again, if you want to go lock button on speed, his course history is pretty damn good, but if I have to own three quarters of my teams, I have to have speed just to be overweight the field by two and a half. That's silly to me. I'd rather just go like, you know, I'd rather just shift some. I'd rather play speed in the field and then play like Brooks and and Reed and Webb and then kind of because the Masters. I mean, the winner is is most likely going to come from that you know twenty five or less range from the betting odds, but you obviously to take down a tournament, you need the guys to finish up top, and then you need one to two guys who out who outscore their uh, their expected finishing position. So who's your I mean have you what who have you bet on so far? And we'll wrap it up. Yeah, so my great way to end it, obviously the my card will be out at BetKarma.com, that Discord here. 
probably by tonight, if not first thing tomorrow morning. But, you know, right now I do have outright bets and they're long bets. Uh, and this is throughout the years. They mentioned Jason Day, 75 to one. Um, I do have a Cam Smith bet at 85 to one, I believe. Um, I'm sitting on a Scotty Scheffler. You know me, I'm a D-Gen with Scotty. So I think I got him at 55 to one. And um, I think I got Morikawa before he won at 35 to one or 40 to one. So mm-hmm. I think I have another bet or two. Again, it's the Masters. I definitely am bet a little bit more, like spread it out throughout the year. I think you do that too, for the majors at least. And then I'll yeah. land my bet on a couple guys. And dude, I mean, it's like, it's Rom or JT. I think I'm going to take a shot this week on Rom or JT is like the upper. I took my shot on JT. I think right. I chose one top guy. I bet very heavy on yeah. JT. I like that. Um, my other favorite bet, I guess, and I, I put mine in Discord. That I mean, I got him at forty this morning. I really like Daniel Berger at forty to one. I don't like Berger. Yeah, you. I don't know. Like, you haven't ever given a reason, but yeah, he. I think he's pretty good. I don't like his shot shape. <laughs> I don't That's like so funny. Shot. One of my friends just hates his swing, so he just hates like because it's so laid off. Yeah, it's it doesn't look good, but I mean, I think he's played some of the most consistent he's a, and great. He's, elite. he's an elite grinder around the green too. So it's actually honestly, if he's if he's good with his irons this week and dialed in accurate off the tee, he is the guy that can spike and win. So it's probably a good bet. All right, Plus, I mean, he got snubbed in November. Didn't even make the yeah, field. That's true. I forgot about that. Damn, narrative mm-hmm. street I like that. Yeah. All right, that wraps it up, y'all. Obviously, we said earlier, hop in, Discord chat, subscribe, core plays, content, cheat sheets, all our bets at betkarma.com. Content goes up as well as goes up there as well. Good luck this week. It's the Masters. Let's all have some fun. All right, bye.